So in this topic, we're going to be talking about GIFs. So GIFs are what we call impulse factors. So impulse factors are what allow people to actually get motivated in order to actually buy. So we looked at the impulse curve before. You've got the buying line at the top. During our presentation, we're going to impulse them up over that buying line so they're going to want to actually buy. And we do that through impulse factors. So it's separated into these five impulse factors. The first one is greed. And then what we do, we look at why and we look at the how. So how to do greed or how to use greed in your presentation. First, we'd like to look at the why. So with what is greed and why is greed. So what and why. It's that people like to get something for nothing. Like something for nothing. So if people want to get something for nothing, they're always looking for a deal, they always want to get something out of it. So it's anything that's going to add them value. So for example, in our presentation, we got stuff like updates. We got pictures, we got videos, we got, what else have we got? We got tax back, thank you booklets, starter packs. Yeah, so we got loads of stuff that we can use, thank you and starter packs. But if we look in any type of sales, it's stuff like two for one. Yeah, so two for one, they're gonna get extra for what they're actually paying for. 50% off, yeah, okay, cool. Obviously, I'm getting extra value there, 20% more. Yeah, so you're having all of these extra greed, it's that people wanna get something for nothing, uh, and that's a massive impulse factor that obviously drives people. With greed, when it looks at the charity division, we do also have the section called the feel-good factor. So the G being the good, the feel good factor. Now that can also be a point that people like the, the warm and fuzzies, they like to have that good feeling. People like to contribute and help others as well. So with how to do that, the feel good factor, it can be stuff like talking about making a difference, lives that you're changing, making a difference, being a part of that solution. Talk about phrases like that and that will incorporate the feel good factor as well. With I, I stands for indifference. So we already talked about indifference uh, in, in different closing, in our closing techniques. But indifference, the reason we do this is obviously people love to buy, but hate to be sold to. So they hate to be sold to. So you see that in loads of times when you look at marketplace type of selling, you might be walking down, you have all these people going, come in here, come in here, come in here, and it's a little bit too much, and you're like, fuck, I don't want to buy anything, even though you're going out there. Yeah, but then when you've got someone that's nice and relaxing, it looks like they're not trying to force it or sell it on you, you're a little bit more open to it. It's because people love to buy, but they hate to be sold to. So how can we do that? Now the best sign of indifference is a shrug. Little shrug like that, showing that you don't care. Eh, it's up to you, yeah? Shrug, you've also got the type of words that you use. So you could use words like opportunity and chance. So when you do this, what it actually allows you to do is removes pressure. So people love to buy, hate to be sold to. So if you use in different phrases, it will remove that pressure and show that you're not being too desperate. So if you feel that you're being overzealous, use certain phrases like sure, opportunity, chance. Maybe in your final objection handles, if you're going into that and you're talking about smaller donations, you can even mention, it might not seem like a lot, that small donation, but the great thing is it gives more people the opportunity and the chance to get involved and make a real difference in lives. Yeah, so you've dropped in obviously a little bit of greed, a bit of indifference in there as well, and also a bit of Jones theory that we'll move on to. F is fear of loss. So the reason we do this is around what we call reverse motivation. Yeah, first motivation, people hate to miss out. Hate missing out. It's what we call, was it FOMO is I think they talk about the fear of missing out. And, and that's fear of loss, it's reverse motivation. It'll make people say if they're walking down the store, make them stop, go back and actually go into the store and actually buy the product right then and there. It makes them actually stop, it reverses that motivation, obviously gets them actually taking action there. How we can do stuff for fear of loss is you could say, you could even say, hate for you to miss out. Don't want to miss an opportunity. Miss opportunities, yeah, before it's too late. So any phrases that show that they're gonna miss out on something, there's that fear of loss. Obviously, you can even mention if you're talking about without 
say for charity divisions, without this support, we're not no longer going to be able to have that. Imagine how tough it would be not being able to have that. Yeah, it gets them in imagining that fear of loss of the product. But also you could talk about if you're selling jewellery or cars or anything like that. Talk about obviously limited time only. Oh, we've only got one more left in stock. That's the famous one, isn't it? Oh, we've only got one more left in the back. It's that fear of loss of, holy shit, I don't want to miss out on my chance of getting it. So only a couple less, limited time only, limited stock. Uh, and that moves us on to our next one, which we're going to skip out the T and we're just going to move down to the S, which is sense of urgency. Now with sense of urgency, it's all about getting people to take action. And it's always time related. So it's always related around time. So what we want to be doing, how can we do that? We can say certain words like critical, crisis. We can use words like urgent. Uh, crisis cru crucial. Uh, yeah, so you can use different words that's going to create that. So you can use words uh, today, now. Obviously, that's why a lot of these words are linked together before it's too late. Hate for you to miss out on what the neighbours are helping out with today. So we're going to get you involved now, yeah? So it builds up a little bit of sense of urgency. You can also speak faster. As we talked about, speak first. We talked about this in our tonality section. The faster you speak, the more it builds up sense of urgency. So you want to do this around your desires and your closes. Build up that sense of urgency that you want to take action there. Sense of urgency. And the last but not least, the Jones Theory. The reason I'm saving this one till last is because I believe that this one is the most powerful one. Put big stars around it and fucking use it. It is the most important one out of all the gifts. It is the sheep factor. People will do what other people are doing, yeah? People just follow, we're like sheep, yeah? So as soon as someone else is doing it, we'll do it. It's in everything and walks of life. So how can you do that? You could mention neighbors, if you're obviously out and about doing campaigns like that. You could talk about community. Uh, you can just say words like everyone. Uh, or all the customers, yeah? So use different phrases that refer to other people, but talk about it continuously. Be dropping it in. Now, this is one that you don't want to emphasize. You don't want to emphasize neighbors. It kind of gives away the trick. If you go, the neighbors have been great, it just emphasizes it too much, and it actually gives away the trick and the impulse of it. But if you just drop in and go, yeah, we're having a great response from the neighbors in the area today for a new community-based campaign. Community-based campaign phrases like that give people that opportunity. So you can even turn it as phrases as... Um, with people in car lots, jewellery and stuff, they always talk about, oh, a massive Christmas sale helping out the community, or a 20% off for the community, or 20% off loyalty cards. Yeah, obviously get people in that way. So obviously it's talking about feel good, for, oh, a bit of greed in that one, but also about the Jones theory around that. So these are the gifts. Now, it's important to use every single one of them. This is the most important, but it's important to use every single one of them because different ones are going to work on different people. Yeah, so obviously if you're going out fishing, if you just have to fish with one hook and one type of bait, you're limiting the type of fish you can get. But if you use like a massive long line and obviously you swept over a massive area and you had loads of different size hooks, loads of different types of baits, you're increasing your opportunity, right? Your law of averages of what you could get. So when you're doing your presentations, you want to make sure that your words that you're using, this is where we go back to words, body language, tonality. The words, the 10%, it might seem small compared to the body language and uh, tonality. But if the words don't have obviously a sales purpose or a direction around them and behind them, they're pointless. You might as well trim them out of your presentation. And, your, and it doesn't matter if you're saying a car, jewelry or whatever, have a presentation. Have a presentation that you know works in an ordering that you can follow because then it's replicable. Then you can teach other people how to do that as well. And you know that the best words are coming out of their mouth. So it's always making sure that gifts are in there. If gifts aren't in the presentation, that's why people come to sales people to do a job. Normally the person that wants the salesperson to go out and represent and make sales for them knows more about the product than the sales agent does. But why does he come to the sales agent? Because they know stuff like this. Closing techniques, features and benefits, et cetera, et cetera, on the stage 101. So these are gifts. Make sure you flood your presentation with them. The more in there, the more they're going to be impulsed up. And in particular, use the Jones Fury as much as you can.